Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Coupa Inspire 2022. This is day two. We've been on the ground in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. Lisa Martin here with Kyle Rogers. Great to be talking with Coupa customers, partners, all the good stuff. Kyle, you are the partner in finance partner finance effectiveness at Clear Sulting. Yes. Welcome yeah. to the program. Thank you, thank you. I'm super happy to be here and, and we're really excited to be uh, a partner with Coupa. Talk to me a little bit about Clear Sulting so the audience gets an understanding of what you guys are doing. Perfect, so I'll introduce myself first. I'm, I'm Kyle Rogers, as you mentioned, I'm a, I'm a partner at the firm. I lead our finance effectiveness practice and, and we focus on a few things. So first is like general finance and accounting operating model work. The second is a lot of global business services, shared services work, so helping clients think about where their talent should sit and, and how those global workflows should work. And then what's really important to this week is we've got a deep capability in procure to pay And at, at Clear Salting, we work with our clients to drive kind of thoughtful and complex solutions for procurement and finance executives, using digital as a key enabler in that. And we've got a number of practices, so we focus on finance effectiveness, which I lead, we've got enterprise performance management, risk advisory, record to report, and, and treasury. One of the things that is the spirit of Coupa is collaboration, the community. How does Clear Sulting, how do you collaborate with your clients? Yeah, it's a great question because we, we think collaboration is so core to being successful and driving good outcomes. So the ways we collaborate with our clients are first, we, we bring like deep expertise around procure to pay, functional subject matter experts. And, and we, we complement that with our innovation center which is a team that's focused on really staying on the forefront of digital and technical solutions and making sure we bring them, them together to give robust and powerful outcomes for our clients. And then, and then lastly, and really importantly, we, we meet our clients where they are. They're all at different stages in their maturity. They've got different goals and objectives. Some might be trying to have a focused, kind of really niche outcome, whereas others might be transformational in nature. So we make sure that we right size our solutions to really get them where they're trying to go. When you're talking with customers that are maybe in the infancy of digitizing procure to pay for example, what are some of the concerns that they have? I mean, I guess these days, if you're not digital, you're not very competitive. Right, I, digital is so important to, to what they do, not, not only to reduce costs and take inefficiencies out of the business, but also when you think about the importance of decision support, right? So tightening the cycle time between business activity and making sense of it, using technology is core and fundamental to being successful. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in procurement, especially anything top of mind the last two years? Yeah, so what we love about Clear Salting is we've got a broad base of clients. And when we meet and work with each of them, they all have their different needs and goals. And, and we've been able to see some through lines across each that have started to emerge. And we've really seen three trends emerge. So th the first is there's a, a, a big focus on operational efficiency. So moving towards a touchless world, taking cost out of the business, and really moving towards um, exception-based, system-driven processes and more towards insight generation, decision support and the like. And then the second is there's a real increased focus on getting total visibility into your spend management, right? So understanding who your suppliers are, what you're buying from them, how much you're spending, and really understanding, are they giving you the value that you thought you were going to get when you, when you onboarded them? And that's really come to the fore through a lot of the supply chain volatility, a lot of the volatility around pricing, especially when you think, look at things like commodities, and just getting real your arms around what, what you're spending on. And then lastly, there's a, there's a new and diverse set of talent in the workforce today, right? And the last 10 to 20 years, we've seen digitally native talent graduate into the workforce. And what their, their hopes and desires and needs are in the workplace are very different than the generation before them. So just giving them tools and digital technologies that will attract them, but also retain them when they're right. here. Yeah. And then, and then also when you think about some of the shifts towards a more remote, remote or hybrid model, having tools and capabilities that allow you to do that. And Coupa's a great example. Right, well, you talked about you know, different generations and the younger generations. I, I think there's four or five generations that are in the workforce today. Wow. And so, and you think of, of you talked about the remote and this hybrid environment that we're still living in, how everything has changed so dramatically in the last couple of years. Yes. That being touchless, contactless, paperless, really became essential 
for so many businesses. How do you guys, what do you define as, as touchless? How is it different than say paperless? Is it just another way of saying it or does it actually mean something different? It's a little, it's a little different. And, and it's not truly touchless because you still need to have the human as part of the process, okay. right? But when we say touchless, it's identifying those points of where is it rules based? Where can we use business logic to drive some system based decisions? And, and taking the robot out of the human, as some say, and really having the human spend their time on, how can I use this information to support the business, get insights out of it, and focus my time on, on work that's meaningful and powerful. Well, work that's meaningful and powerful to them that will make them want to stay Absolutely. at their jobs, but also work that allows them to be able to focus on more strategic uh, projects for the business, let the other stuff be touchless and automated where it can be, right. so that their focus is on more business critical activities or initiatives. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you think about things like supporting sourcing on making sure that they've got their strategic suppliers set up and they're spending uh, with the right suppliers, th that is so much more valuable of, of use of your time than reconciling an invoice to a uh, goods receipt. Right. right. You mentioned insights uh, and visibility, and visibility, I was just talking with a Coupa customer that had uncovered $2 billion in indirect spend that they couldn't see before Coupa, and I just can't help but think how many businesses in every industry are out there with billions in indirect spend that they literally can't see. If you can't see it, you can't be able to, to you know, make the right decisions on it. Talk to me about enabling that visibility as, as a key outcome for your clients. Right, and, and I think that to your point, it, it's not just that. What we also see is that there's not great duplicate detection. So a lot of times our, 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 our customers, our, our clients are, are paying their suppliers more than once for the same, for the same, same inventory. So, so getting their view on, on exactly what they're spending, what's paid, what's not paid, how is it impacting our supply chain, how is that balancing up against our revenue forecast to make sure that we've got inventory moving through our supply chain at the right time. The, the visibility there is fundamental to being, being successful in the, in the current, day, current day marketplace. Talk to me about now some of your experiences working directly with Coupa clients. What are some of the things that you've been able to enable? Any stories stick out in your mind as this really articulates the value that we bring with, to Coupa? Absolutely, so we, we worked with, uh, we just wrapped up a project and, and the client was um, using some legacy ER, ERPs. They had gone through a period of, of pretty significant M&A. So they have a pretty diverse technology landscape and they wanted to find a procure to pay solution that met all of their requirements. And Coupa was the perfect fit. We helped work, work them through the process and move towards where a point where every single invoice had to get manually entered, every single invoice had to get manually matched. Oh wow. Yeah, to, to leveraging a lot of the capabilities Coupa has around EDI and DCR and uh, the supplier portal to automate a lot of that and then streamline a lot of the matching. And then on the back end, just getting visibility into who you're spending your money with. As you mentioned, you said $2 billion of an indirect spend that they had no idea where that was going. That is very common. Common? Common. Is it? I mean, not, not that amount, but the, but, but the, 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 the fact that you, you don't have pure visibility in your end-to-end -end spend is very common. Are you seeing any trends towards that maybe changing, considering what we've all been through in the last two years when suddenly everybody went home and you couldn't get to those paper invoices or those paper POs? Do you see more businesses going, help us out, we've got to digitize, we don't have a choice? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So it's, it's, it's moving supp suppliers onto more digital uh, invoice submission methods, whether it be the portal, whether it be uh, uh, digital PDF sending in through, through common inboxes, and then moving it away from invoices not going to the manufacturing plants anymore. We've got that going to a central location. If it needs to be physical, you've got one place that houses it versus many disparate ones. Well, and Cuba talked a lot about that the last couple of days, about the, the essentially the get, getting rid of the silos. Yes. I was talking with Rob earlier today, Raja Hamoud was here as well, and talking about there's still a lot of silos out there that our organizations are operating under, which limits their visibility and limits their potential, I think, to be competitive. Right, and, and I think what we find is, is procurement is historically has been a, a, a very siloed organization because that's been the back of what a lot of businesses grow on as either R&D or procurement and buyers, and, and they, want it, they don't want to have a lot of control in their space. So making sure that they can have the flexibility to buy real time, maybe use a lot of, um, a lot of institutional knowledge to overcome some, some process or system gaps. So there, there, there can be some challenges moving them into centralized model, but when you think about the broader business case, 
on, on rationalizing your, your supplier base, making sure that you're getting the most favorable terms with, with, with your suppliers, and then also having control over when cash goes out the door and who goes out the door too, is, is far outweighs some of the other, other benefits associated with having it decentralized. These days, businesses in any industry don't have time to wait for tribal knowledge to be able to no. help determine the next direction. We are also used to everything on demand that the real-time access to the data, the insights, where are, where is the money going, who are we contracting with, that real time is no, no longer a nice thing to have for organizations, it's a requirement. Right, and, and I think uh, one big shift we've seen is a lot of companies used to be organized functionally, so meaning you had finance operate in a silo, procurement operate in a silo, IT operate in a silo, but that's really been flipped on its head. And they're now they're organized around end-to-end -end processes. So when you look at procure to pay, you're touching a diverse set of stakeholders from sourcing, procurement, IT, treasury, legal, finance, and so on. So tribal knowledge doesn't work anymore. You have to have tight handoffs, you have to have tight orchestration, and you need to have stakeholders aligned. How do you help customers navigate that? Because one of the things that can be challenging is, especially for maybe more history organizations that are used to and very comfortable in their swim lanes and their silos. How do you help them from a change management perspective be able to, to connect all those pieces together so that ultimately everybody's job is, is you know, able to deliver more value to the business? Right, so one of the things that we at ClearSalting are really good at is we understand the language of each of those stakeholder groups. So we can talk to finance, we can talk to procurement, we can talk to sourcing and IT, and we understand what makes them tick and what their objectives are and how they think. So when we work with our clients, we really make sure that we have that through line around what's the common story here, the common message, that's going to resonate with everyone because it's really important to have your stakeholders engaged and on board to have successful outcomes with Coupa or any sort of P2P transformation. I want to talk about talent for a second. You mentioned that a minute ago, and you know, we're all living through the great resignation. Yes. I'm sure you have friends, I do too, that, that decided to make changes during the last couple of years. The opportunities are there, but it's important for, for companies to be able to retain talent, but and part of that, to your point earlier, was especially for the younger generations, you need to be able to have the technology and the capabilities to enable that generation to want to stay and grow within an organization. Right, right. and I think Coupa has, has really driven value to our clients' talent strategies in a couple ways. Chiefly, it's, it's moving the robot out of the human, which I mentioned a little bit about earlier. So a lot of the activities that are repetitive, rule-based, that historically we've, we've thrown people at to try and get it done, now the system can handle that. As long as you've got your processes designed accordingly, it can accommodate a lot of those exceptions. And, and the work that people are supporting after that is more meaningful, right? It's understanding, okay, what's valuable to the business? How can I help support decisions to do that? And, and what can we do around continuous improvement to continue to maximize what we're doing? And then secondly, around the great resignation, uh, the, the remote or hybrid model is a, a key recruit, recruitment mechanism. Yes. And using Coupa, which is a SaaS solution, and one that can be or orchestrated and designed globally, allows for more flexible models, both from rem remote to in-person, but also it allows for global flexibility, right, and global workflows. Global flexibility, global workflows, but also that global collaboration that yes. I think we've, we all need to have, and that's really what Coupa thrives on, that community that's really, I always say, it's very symbiotic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and Coupa being an integrated solution that, as, as we mentioned, is end-to-end, is -end source to pay, allows for seamless integration across each of your communities and each of parts of your business, because then you can look at things globally as, as well as, you know, as opposed to some of the siloed, more regional views that they had before. Right. What are some of the, the last question for you, what are some of the things that are exciting to you about what you've heard at the event the last couple of days, some of the future direction of clear salting? What, what's on your plate? I, you know, the, 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 the session yesterday morning around collaboration was, was really powerful to us because we find that collaboration with our clients is, is a, a big change agent to driving value. And then thinking about your supplier network as an ecosystem to collaborate on is, is a big takeaway from us this weekend. And it's been really powerful to see everyone working together and, and finding creative solutions that, that meet everyone's needs in a global workforce. Yep. 
I agree. Kyle, thank you for joining me on the program this afternoon talking about Clear Salting, your partnership with Coupa and how you're helping those customers go touchless. We appreciate your insights. Thank you, Lisa, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, I'm Kyle Rogers, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Coupa Inspire Day Two, coming at you from Las Vegas.